Now, uh, lecture three, uh, curvilinear coordinates. So in this lecture, uh, we are going to expand what we learned into uh, curved coordinate systems, not just uh, uh, Cartesian coordinate, but uh, uh, cylindrical or spherical coordinate systems. So motivation is, is obvious, right? Uh, if depending on the problem, symmetry of the problem, like the earth and the space or current and the magnetic field. Uh, sometimes Cartesian coordinates are um, inappro inappropriate or sometimes it just make problem more complicated. So for instance, in, in left uh, hand case, spherical coordinate is the right choice, right? Everyone should agree, spherical, uh, spherical choice uh, with origin centered at the uh, position of the earth. That's kind of a right choice. And then here, the right choice should be cylindrical coordinate, right? Because it had this, the problem itself has cylind cylindrical symmetry. And um, before we move on to uh, the details, uh, let me just try to be general, okay? Right, uh, that's correct. So Jo Yun Sang, as Jo Yun Sang and uh, Song Eun Seok said, I uh, actually haven't uploaded the lecture note to the course webpage yet because I expect uh, that uh, I'm gonna finish the previous lecture note today, and that was uh, that's gonna be it. But you know, uh, we, we finished the previous lecture notes earlier than I, and I expected, so I just moved on. But I'll, I'll move, uh, I'll upload the lecture note three uh, right after the class, okay? So, um, yeah, so uh, in three-dimensional space, you need, of course, three numbers to identify a point, right? Q1, Q2, Q3. And then um, the curvilinear coordinates means coordinate systems in which coordinate lines may be curved. So like, um, you know, these curved coordinate systems are called cur curvilinear coordinates. And uh, basis vectors, as I said, uh, you have three, you have three uh, linearly independent basis vectors, A1, A2, A3 along Q1, Q2, Q3 coordinate uh, axis, right? So uh, the coordinate axis Q1, Q2, Q3 correspond to like R theta phi, right? In, in spherical coordinate. And then uh, A1, A2, A3, of course, is like AR, A theta, A phi, right? In uh, like a, uh, basis vectors. And then, uh, let's see. Okay, so one thing that I want to uh, want you to uh, keep in mind is that this A1, A2, A3 is not a fixed vector. Like, let's take an example. If you have a Cartesian coordinate, then it doesn't matter like whether, so let's say you are here, you are at this position in the Cartesian coordinate. Still, your basis vectors are this is AX, this is AY, right? And then same thing here, if you are here, this is your AX and this is your AY. So, so because of this, Cartesian coordinate is easy to handle because your basis vectors does not change as a function of your position. But uh, let's think about um, polar coordinate, for instance. So polar coordinate uh, looks like this, like, like, like this, right? This is polar coordinate. Now, uh, polar coordinate is composed of A, say, AR and A, A theta, for instance. And here, your coordinate uh, basis vectors are this is A theta and this is AR, right? Because AR is uh, uh, 
in, in radial direction, and a theta is like an in angular direction, azimuthal direction. But in this position, your a theta is going up, and a r is going here, right? So the actual direction of your a r and a theta, the basis vectors, are basically changing as a function of position in this case, right? So this is a big difference between uh, uh, Cartesian coordinates and other coordinate systems. A, A1, A2, A3, these uh, basis vectors are not a constant. It is a function of uh, the position for Q1, Q2, Q3. So that's one thing you need to keep in mind. And then to make our uh, discussion simple, uh, we want to just focus on orthogonal coordinate systems. So what I mean by orthogonal means uh, this property. So if you have A1, A2, A3, then AI dot AJ is zero if AI is not equal to AJ. And then AI dot AJ is one if they are equal. This is called the orthogonal uh, properties or orthonormal basis. And then you, you should know that this is not a trivial thing. Let's say you can think of uh, this type of coordinate system, slanted coordinate system. And now uh, this is your A1 and this is your A2, right? And then this coordinate system is obviously not orthogonal because A1.A2 is non-zero. Right? because they are not perpendicular. So this is not a trivial property. We are just assuming uh, orthogonal coordinate because it's simpler to, to handle, okay? So you have orthogonal properties. And another thing uh, we want to also assume is right-handedness. So when we assign A1 and A2 and A3, we always uh, take kind of this, uh, this way, like A1 cross A2 becomes A3. A2 cross A3 becomes A1. A3 cross A1 becomes A2. This is kind of cyclic order. So this is called a right-handed coordinate system. And then we'll fo uh, follow this uh, convention, okay? And these are of course, just a constraint. It's not an obvious thing. We just assume these things in order to make our discussion simpler. And now uh, the representation of vector is uh, as what, uh, it's the same as what we learned. Like we, we have, uh, you know, this uh, A1, A1, A2, A2, A3, A3. A1, A2, like capital A1, A2, A3 are just coefficients. And then uh, small A1, A2, A3 are the basis, right? Uh, and the vector multiplications are defined like this, just uh, the same as a Cartesian coordinate. Assuming that uh, vector A and B are defined at the same point. Okay, so I guess this so far things are not uh, too complicated. But uh, if uh, let me know if if you have any any question uh, up to this point. I think up to this point I just gave you just definitions, right? So there's nothing much you you want to ask. So now, uh, okay. Okay, Kim Jumo asks, uh, is always orthogonal system coordinate is right-handed coordinate too? No, it's not the case. So, uh, and this is also a very good question. So what he asked is that this property, this property and that property always goes together? No, right? So it's, um, you know, independent thing. So we can just, uh, we are just assuming that both of these are applied. Now uh, we are learning a important concept and I want, I'm going to re, uh, redo, uh, re-explain this thing in, in next lecture, but I'm going to do it uh, today too, because I think this is so important. So again, this is really important thing. So please uh, uh, keep concentrated. 
So what this slide says that Q1, Q2, Q3 are not necessarily be length. Okay, people just um, easily assume that Q1, Q2, Q3 are lengths, but it's not the case. So uh, differential length, like a length uh, can be achieved uh, by H multiplied by DQ. And then here H is the scale factor, okay? So um, what, what do I mean? Because this, uh, you know, you always need to explain things in, in, with examples. Like let's say X, Y, Z coordinate. X, Y, Z coordinate, uh, the coordinate variables are all length, right? So L, uh, D, L, X, like length along X direction is just DX. Length along Y direction is just DY, right? Nothing to worry about. But uh, let's take an example of polar coordinate. So in this case, R is length, right? But theta is angle. It's not a length, right? So in order to get a infinitesimal length, you have to multiply something, right? So like in this example, uh, in order to get the infinitesimal length along radial direction, dl1, it's just equal to dr, but dl2 is not d theta, right? In order to get the length along this direction, you need to multiply r, right? r d theta is your length, infinitesimal length. And then we call this r as a scale factor. So in case uh, of this, the scale factor is one, and then in case of theta, the scale factor is R. And then this sounds very simple, but this uh, becomes important uh, as you move on and then you tr try to introduce differential operators, which I will cover uh, in the next lecture.